There is the story that there are two wolves that live in us. One is the good wolf and the other one is the bad wolf. And often they are fighting amongst each other. And the question is, who usually wins? So ask yourself, if you have two wolves within you, who wins? And the answer is the one that you feed. Why am I sharing the story with you? Because very often people come and ask me, how do you get rid of negative thoughts? It's tough. I try many times. I want to change it. But these negative thoughts don't leave me. And guess what? They don't leave you because that's what you're feeding. That's what you're thinking about all the time, consciously or not. It is the bad wolf that you're feeding. And because you're focusing and feeding so much on it, it's just growing and it grows so big that sometimes you feel overwhelmed that you can't get rid of these negative thoughts. So when you get an opportunity, try feeding the other wolf, which is the positive thoughts, enabling thoughts, thoughts that inspire you and motivate you. So catch yourself when you're getting into a negative thought spiral and tell yourself, hey, I'm catching it in the nip. I'm not going to continue with this thought. I'm going to change directions and look at things that motivate, inspire me. And for me, sometimes resources help. For example, I may not feel strong enough to get out of that negative thought and break that pattern. So I just open up my music album and listen to my favorite songs. And while I listen to those favorite songs, it just helps me disconnect with that negative thought, gets me flowing into the music, changes my mood, and then it helps me get into thinking positively, thinking into areas that inspire me, motivate me. And this habit can be achieved if you consistently do it. Catch yourself two, three times a day Increase that to four or five times and you'll, nat you'll notice that you naturally start thinking more positive, you'll naturally think more futuristic and you'll feel much happier about yourself. Have a great day. Good morning everyone. As some of you would know, I've recently moved cities and in the last couple of months it's been an amazing roller coaster ride for me setting up my new home, getting the kids in school, getting them ready in a new culture, um, getting used to a completely new lifestyle that I was not used to for decades. But in this whole process, I didn't realize I stopped doing some of the good practices that I picked up in my old city. Until yesterday, when I was going through a very old interview of Oprah Winfrey, where she talked about the benefits of meditation and how meditation changed her life. That she even introduced meditation into her team and into her team's lives. She talked about having a routine of meditating twice a day and how meditation improved productivity, reduced conflicts and just made her team a happier lot. And got me thinking that in all this setting up a new home and a lifestyle, I had forgotten to do a good habit that I had picked up so this morning when I woke up, I created a nice little meditation corner for myself and I meditated. The good thing about going back to an old habit is that it's not too much of a struggle. You don't go through the initial pangs of picking up a good habit. And I enjoyed the whole process. It was as if I had not stopped, stopped it at all. And I made a commitment to myself today, no matter what, I'm going to meditate twice a day, every day. And with this, I'd like to leave a thought with you. What is a good habit that you stopped, that you would like to restart all over again? Have a good day. Little book called Gratitude Journal. I used to earlier put it on my bedside because I've heard about it and I know journaling in the night is really good, but it didn't work for me because by the time I went to bed, I was really too tired to think about and put this down but it worked really well for me when I put on my work desk because it's the first thing when I start the day I go through my gratitude journal put down things that I'm really grateful for before starting the day 
and um, start the day with that positive intention and um, excitement. And I want to talk to all of you about gratitude and how important that is. And many of you already know that the joys gratitude brings with you. It, it enables you to look positively, especially in adversity. It enables you to be grateful with, with what you have. And it also enables you to get happiness in small things in life and not focus on things that we are not getting, but focus on things that we already have. Because we all always have something, um, it, whether it's a body, it's the family, loved ones, the work, the food on the table, the roof on the house. There's so many blessings we can count even in the worst of times. But what this has helped mostly for me is I focus on putting adversity in my journal. Um, there is more of what didn't work for me or what I missed out on or the issues or problems or sickness that I go through. I put that down in my journal because I feel there's always, always blessings in things that are that we feel are taken away from. And what's interesting is when I journal them down, um, whether I'm grateful for this autoimmune disease that I have, there's always some opportunity that comes uh, along with that, whether it is a support structure that I get at home or whether it's really an understanding client or, um, or just getting the greatest help possible. Um, so there's so many wonderful things that happen around adversity that we don't tend to look at and don't focus on. And this is what this journaling has taught me. Um, that there's so much of beautiful opportunities around us and that we just need to start looking at those. Start looking at adversity as well and look at what blessings that come around with it. So I'm going to leave with a small note and invitation to each one of you is today what you're grateful for and look at how you can add or lengthen that list so you may have three things today that you're grateful for can you look at four tomorrow can you look at five tomorrow and keep increasing it uh, little things matter so add to that list start your day with gratitude because it's definitely going to bring positivity for you. And if you are positive and you start the day, the rest of the day just flows in that space as well. So wishing you all the best. Stay happy, stay kind. There are many tools and techniques and it depends on person to person. For example, um, having 15 minutes to yourself to be able to have that conversation or notice or listen to what you're doing is really helpful. Because if you're running like a bullet train throughout the day with your various roles, not just as a profession, but you come back home as a father, as a mother, and you know those roles and you don't have time to self-reflect, there is no growth happening. Because you need to pause, look at what you've achieved so far, you've done so far, you're thinking so far to make that shift happen. So my advice would be find that 15 minutes, whatever time of the day. So some early morning people, some are late night people. Do whatever you feel in that 15 minutes. It gets you to self-reflect. It could be either journaling, you're not a journaling person. Listen to some music and notice or meditation or, um, or speak with somebody. Like if you have somebody who's, who's a good listener. Um, and that doesn't need to happen every day, probably once a week have that conversation. So find that resource where you take out 15 minutes a day or probably half an hour, one hour in a week where you just pause and self-reflect. What have I done so far and where do I want to go? So there's two questions I keep asking myself uh, in between is when I do the self-reflection is what do I believe in? in this moment, because beliefs change too, right? With our journeys and with our circumstances, what I believe in this moment. And if my belief is not supporting growth, I would say, how could I be wrong in this belief? And so it's non-judgmental. I'm not, I'm not even pushing myself down or putting myself down. I'm just questioning as a third party, non-judgmental, as a coach, how could I be wrong here? And if you have somebody else asking that question, it's even better because then you can hear your own voice and then make that decision.
Today I have a question for you to ask yourself. Am I a victim or a victor? <clears throat> Often in situations that is a big challenge for us, we have certain mind traps and certain thoughts that leads us to a space of victimship. And what I mean by victimship is this is not in my control or this always happens to me. I feel weak. I feel helpless. I have zero control in this situation. And while in some cases it may be true, especially where things are controlled by external agencies like the government or environment or institutions, there is still something within our control, which is our attitude towards that situation. How do we see that situation for ourselves? Do we see it as something that's gloom or do we see it as something that has some bit of opportunity in it or a learning in it or an opportunity for me to pivot or do something different? And that for me is the victor mindset. So victor is not necessarily winning. It's about doing something positive or thinking about something positively, especially a situation that has a negative connotation in your mind. So it's a work that we continuously do ourselves, do on ourselves. We look at uh, situations and we feel that it's something that's out of our control. But at that moment, ask yourself, am I choosing to be a victim? Do I just blame everything outside and feel that I have no control? Or can I choose myself to be a victim in this process and see what I can make the most out of it? So I'm leaving you with this thought what would you choose today to be a victim or a victor? I had one story that kept me going, the story I kept telling myself. It was something on the lines that I'm special. I didn't know how then or what I was meant to do. Sometimes I was even ashamed of thinking about why would I think I'm special? But that voice, I think, gave me a lot of hope and also allowed me to look at new possibilities and try new things um, and when you try new things, there's a lot of struggle. There's a lot of struggle and the struggle is really useful. And in those years of uh, finding your purpose and in finding what your natural talents are, questioning yourself, your confidence, sometimes going through depression, um, where I wouldn't believe that any of the stories I was telling myself about being special or talented were true. But I feel struggle sometimes lead us to a journey a journey of uh, things that you wouldn't dra dare dreaming about. So I did everything that scared me. So I used fear as my lighthouse. Um, I spent 30 years of my life running away from it. So let me kind of, in my 30th year, try and pivot and let's go towards it. And that took me into a journey of doing uh, or creating possibilities for me. So I became an entrepreneur for the first time in 2012. I co-founded a company that eventually became one of the top 10 leadership companies in India. Six years later, I moved to Australia and set our business up here as well. Uh, I spoke at two TEDx forums and overcame my glossophobia, the fear of public speaking. And now with over 100 blue chip clients across the world, coaching some of the brightest minds um, and leaders, um, who would have thought, who would have thought my, certainly my old self would never have dreamt me being in this journey. So yes, my story of a scared little girl who wanted to be invisible and hidden from the world to somebody today who wants to spread that light, that light of awareness, to tell everyone that there is a place for all of us here with all our imperfect imperfections too.